one's <laughs> You'll be back here. You'll be down here. You know, it's nice to hear all the kind words and people applaud for you and stuff like that, but we need to give it to the one who's Amen. working. I've been called Ed. <laughs> My wife calls me Huckleberry. Yes, I do. He's my Huckleberry. Work, they call me Hey You. Yep. I won't tell you what my congregation calls me. <laughs> He's got it. Special well, one way. Day. Yeah. yeah. He's going to call Amen. Amen. Yeah. And I'm going to answer. Yeah. And on that day, I'm going home. Yeah. And if you can't say that with a certainty, yeah. right, today is the day to make sure. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I got to tell you, my heart's full. Yeah. Yeah. Touch him, Lord. You know what it does to me? Bless you, Lord. Watch my granddaughter over here worship. <laughs> Touches me in a way I can't explain. There's so much, so much we can talk about, but we've only got a limited time, so you're going to have to listen fast. <laughs> I want to go to the book of Acts in chapter 3. While you turn to that, I'm going to have a little word of prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for what our hearts have felt already. Amen. Lord, for what we've experienced, for what we've seen, for what we've been allowed to take part in. But God, we know there's much, much more. And Father, now as we look into your word, I pray, Father God, that you would be the one who speaks. Take this flesh and use it for your honor and for your glory. I pray, Father, you would look on the hearts that are gathered here and meet the needs that are present. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. 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 Before I get into the scripture, I know Brother Rene had people come up for prayer and he prayed for people. And uh, uh, that was great and that was wonderful. But I feel led to say this. There was a man that came to Jesus to be healed of his blindness. Yeah. And Jesus went to heal that man and he said, I see man as trees walking. Wow. And he had to be touched again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. If the Lord moves on you, <laughs> if you feel a drawing, if you feel a calling, if you feel the Lord has something for you, if you feel the Lord wants to do something for you, don't you hesitate. Yeah. Don't you wait. Don't you say, I don't already got prayed for. Because if the Spirit is drawing you, it's because He's got something for you. I, I, want, I want you to do something. I want you to look at this sign right here. Yeah. 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 What do you need? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what, I don't know about you, but I serve a miracle working God. Yeah. And my Bible tells me that when his people gather together, and it was already said, he is in the midst. Amen. He is here. Yeah. He is here. Amen, and I can't stress this strongly enough. I, I know God wants to do something for people. I know he does because I feel it in my spirit. But when he says go, that's the time to go. When he says move, that's the time to move. Don't you wait for me to ask you. Like if I'm preaching, it don't matter what's going on, you come on down. Hey, God will meet you here. I can guarantee you that. If God is calling you, it will be in order. Amen. In the book of Acts, in chapter 3, Beginning at verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. 
Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, yes. but such as I have give I thee. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Yes. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Mm -hmm. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel you at this? Or why look you so earnestly on us, as though by our own power of holiness we made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus. Jump down to verse 16. And his name, through faith in his name, yes, yes. hath made this man strong, yes. whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Jump down to 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Now we're going to stop reading right there, and I'm going to try to, uh, just as quickly as I can, hit a couple points. Uh, uh, the brother said it this morning, and he opened the door. It's amazing how God works and puts things together. He said, you can't count on a man, you can't count on the church, you can't count on denomination. And I'm going to look at this man, and I want to tell you, this man had a need, this man had a problem. And where did he go? He went to church. No. He was at the temple every day, every day, every day. He was at the temple, and it doesn't say it, but I dare say, the priests and the rabbis and the Sadducees and the Pharisees walk right by that man sitting there. But he went there every day, and what did he go there for? To get some money. <laughs> Must have been one of the prosperity doctrine churches. <laughs> but he never got anything else. That man didn't get what would really help him. That man didn't get what he really needed. He was looking for what he needed in the wrong place. And I believe that there's a lot of people today that are looking for what they need in the wrong place. Amen. You may think because you go to church, you may think because uh, you uh, make your attendance is regular, or whatever you may think, that it's going to be all right, that you count on the church, or you may follow some man, and there's a multitude of them out there that will tell you if you support their ministry, and if you follow them, and you do what they say, well, then all these amazing things will happen to you. Well, I want to tell you what Peter and John said. There ain't no man that can do what you need done. There ain't no man that can move like Jesus Christ can move in your life. We need to understand that it is only the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I like it uh, that people want to hear me preach, and I like it that people talk well of me, but I'm going to tell you something, I can't do a thing for you. Amen. Amen. Not a thing. That guy on TV that you watch, he can't do a thing for you. I don't care how big his ministry is. I don't care how big his name is. I don't care how many people fall down and flop when he gets around there. I don't care what kind of craziness goes on. He can't do nothing for you. It is the power that lies in the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I preached the other night. Uh, to our, our congregation and the Lord's bringing it back to my memory we're only serving half of Jesus come on we're only serving the lovey dovey give me stuff Jesus come on. we're only serving the one that'll kiss my boo-boos and make me feel better Jesus I'm going to tell you something when he asked Peter who do you say that I am but what did Peter say thou art the Christ Amen. the son of the living God we forget that all power, he said, is given to me. Yeah. And I will give it. 
to whomsoever I choose. Yeah. Listen, this man went down there to the temple and he spent a lot of time at the temple and the religious people walked on by him. Religious people never did a thing for him. In our modern day, we could say they're the preachers, they're the evangelists, or they're the deacons, they're the Sunday school teacher, whatever. But they walk right on by that man. Maybe they dropped a penny in once in a while. I don't know, but that's not what that man needed. Okay. That man needed a touch. Amen. Maybe you need a touch. Or you might sit there and think, well, I'm physically healthy and I'm doing fine. That's great. That's wonderful. Praise God and give him the glory for that. But I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of us, and notice I said us, there's a lot of us Christians that got some spiritual infirmities. Amen. Come on. Come on. Maybe you got a little spiritual limp that you need taken care of. Maybe you got a little spiritual problem that you need taken care of. Well, I'm going to tell you something. This same Jesus that healed that man's land will heal your spirit. Amen. Amen. Preaching Lord. How many people in this life go through their life without going to the doctor? Amen. How many? Amen. How many are quick to run to the doctor? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, I got pneumonia. I better go to the doctor. Amen. How many Christians go to the doctor? Amen. Come on. Amen. Listen, Christian, we need to spend time here. Amen. Amen. The children of God need to spend time here. Yeah. You know who the honor is for? It's for the children of God. That's it. It's a meeting place to come and meet with God. In the Old Testament, he would tell the prophets, he would tell the men of old, build an altar, and then what? I will meet you. Amen. 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 But no, I can't go up there in front of the whole church. They're going to think I did something. They're going to think something's wrong. I know, I, I repeat myself. A lot of you probably heard this already. But this is what God gives me. Bless it doesn't Lord. matter what they think. Amen. Amen. Come on. It matters what he Amen. knows. Amen. And listen, if he calls you, it's for your benefit. Amen. He's got something for you. Amen. How many of you can say that you are filled to overflowing with the Spirit of God? How many of you can say that you are on fire? How many of you can say that you got all of God you want, all of God you need, all of God there is to get? Then why do we stop? Come on. He said, seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. I think a lot of times we're scared. Yep. We're scared. Oh yeah. We might just get a hold of this guy. <laughs> then what? <laughs> Come on. Listen, this man was down there at the temple and he was begging for alms and religious people went on by him. And I gotta stress this point and I'm gonna move on. The church didn't do a thing for him. The preachers didn't do a thing for him. I hear come along, Peter and John, followers of the living God, Come followers of the Christ, followers of the Messiah. Here they come along, and this guy looked at them just like he looked at every other religious person. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. If you don't talk different, if you don't walk different, if you don't act different, if you don't protrude something from your inner being, they're looking at you just like every other religious person. Yes. Right. Amen. Yes. Yes. You'll tell them, I'm a Christian. Well, so is that guy on TV that wants all my money so he can buy an airplane. <laughs> they look at you just like they look at the rest. That's there right. must be something Different. What was different about these two men? They didn't dig in their pocket, throw a penny in the cup, go on to ease their conscience. A lot of times we think we can do something and go on by. Yep, I helped. I did a good thing. Lord, I hope you saw that. 
they gave him what he needed, Man. what he really needed. Yeah. You know, when you're driving down the road, you get off of 83, and there standing at the exit is a man with a sign, and he says, I'll work for money, or can you give me a dollar, or whatever. It says, how many have ever stopped and offered him what he really needs? Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, Help us, Lord. Come on. Think about it. We are to be just like they were. Nothing has changed. That's right. But we'll put the dollar in his cup or a hand him a sandwich and think that we have done something amazing and think that we have done something wonderful. The oh. best thing you can ever do for anybody is give them Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You know what? I would love to be able to give to all those I see hurting. To be able to help those who are in poverty and those are who are in need and all kinds of things that I touch your heart. But I don't have the money. I don't can't do that. But I can do this. Yeah. I can give them something more. Yeah. I can give them something better. I can be just like Peter and John. And I'll put it in today's terms. Five or ten bucks I ain't got. But what I got, I'm gonna give you. Yeah. And give them Christ. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So says, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He was expecting to re receive something of the religious people. The people that are turning on the TV, the people that are going down to the church, they're expecting to receive something of the man, of the people, of the church. Why do they do that? Because too few of us have been out there showing them Christ. Come on. He looked on them expecting to receive something. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You know what? That's the same God I serve. Amen. And he has not lost one iota of his power. He has not weakened. He has not quit doing miracles. He has not failed. The problem lies within the Christian. That same God who indwelt Peter and John indwells us today. And we, we should be able to do the very same thing that they did. Come on. But we're not doing it. We're not doing it. And I think the reason is we are spiritually unhealthy. Amen. We need a doctor visit. We need a doctor visit. There's a scripture that says, Unto them that believe shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth. That's what we need. We need to come to him and have that son of righteousness arise and heal our soul and heal our spirits and heal our hearts and then we, the church of Jesus Christ, need to go forth and conquer this dirty, filthy, dark world. Yes, yes, yes. Lord. Amen. Bless you, Lord. I love this that's going on here today. And I've said it to so many. It is so wonderful with people of different denominational backgrounds, with people of different ways of worship, people who like different kinds of music, uh, people that uh, do things differently, but all love God. Amen. We come together Amen. in unity. And there is power in numbers. Amen. There is strength in numbers. The Bible tells us a single strength a single thread is easily broken. Yeah. But a threefold yeah. is not easily broken. But there's a couple more than three of us here. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine the power. Imagine the power if we would all get a hold of it. If we would all get filled. If we would all let go and let God be God and go forth and do that that he has called us to do. Yeah. Yeah. There's a scripture in the book of Acts that says, they went to one town and preached. Upset the whole town. Man, they got mad. They were coming uh, to drag them out. But you know what they said? Those that have turned the world upside down have come here also. Wouldn't you like to hear that? Amen. We can turn your county upside down. Amen. 